Welcome everyone. My name is Cassandra. I'm a third year chemical engineering student. Hello, I'm Zoe. I'm a first year science and technology studies major. Hi everyone, I'm Chris and I'm a second year aerospace engineer. Hello, my name is Trevor and I'm a first year aerospace engineering major. And we are representing the COILS team, a part of Attitude Determination Control System subsection of the Space and Satellite Systems Club. And today we'll be presenting our current work in progress on the manufacturing and testing of minor torquers for the UC Davis CubeSat mission. So for our mission, when the CubeSat is deployed, it will experience dis disturbances, which results in tumbling. And tumbling is the misalignment and turning due to, to disturbance forces such as air drag and solar radiation. ADCS's role in the CubeSat design is to ensure that the CubeSat camera points in the desired orientation towards Earth. The COILS team's role is to design and manufacture a system of magnetic torpors that will generate the magnetic field for the tumbling process. Magnetic torpors are ADCS tool that consists of electromagnetic coils, and the magnetic fields that they generate are responsible for detumbling, desaturation, and controlling the satellite. Detumbling is a method to stop and counteract the tumbling. Desaturation is assisting the reaction wheels in that capacity in the process called momentum dumping. And reaction wheels are another control component of ABCS. Complying with our constraints, our team has researched, designed, and tested magnet torque prototypes in an optimal configuration. The contention of our research can be used and referenced by any future organization that is starting a CubeSat project. So we have both control requirements you must achieve and constraints you must comply with. Each magnet order must have a minimum magnetic moment, but also have a target magnetic moment of 0.2 amperes squared. The minimum was calculated as the required moment to counteract external torques, and the target is the industry standard. Combined, the magnet torquers must point the CubeSat within plus or minus five degrees of the desired orientation. We tumble the satellite within 72 hours and desaturate the reaction wheels within 12 hours. Our constraints include the dimensions our configuration will fit in, which is approximately the size of this Apple product box, the maximum watts of power it can use, and how much it can weigh. And next, Cassandra will be going over the configuration. Our team designed a configuration that consists of three magnet torquers, one being an air core and two being a torquer rod. For our air core to produce our desired magnetic moment, it will be 78 by 78 by 25 millimeters in dimensions. It will have one layer of wrapped wire, which you can see in our picture. It will have six, we'll wrap our structure um, 66 times to create that one layer. It will run at 0.6 amps and it will control the z-axis of our CubeSat. We also have two rods that are integrated within the structure as seen in the picture. They are 71 millimeters in length and six millimeters in diameter, both being two layers with wire wrap 222 times per layer. And it will be running at 0.25 amps to produce our magnetic moment. And it will control the x and y axis of our CubeSat. So not only did we design our configuration to meet the mission requirements that was mentioned by Trevor, but we also set criteria for ourselves that we wanted to design off of. One of them being that we wanted our component to be compact, just so it takes up less space within the CubeSat. We also wanted to design it so it was easy to manufacture since we are making it in-house. And we wanted to have our design as simple as possible just so it's easy to integrate when it comes to assembling our pizza. And now Chris will be going over our optimization process on how we designed our Okay, so the goal of our optimization is to find a combination of rod size, current, and length of wire that satisfies our requirements of magnetic dipole, power, and space constraints. Um, now in this optimization procedure, there's a large number of unknown variables. So, and so 
many of them variables were fixed and others were optimized to fit the requirements. Um, so some important relationships to consider. Um, a larger core shape, which is a ratio of length over radius, yields a higher magnetic dipole and faster demagnetization times. Um, a demagnetization time is essentially the time it takes for the rod to be rid of any dipole when the current is off. Um, the reason we want this to be as low as possible is so that when we turn off our magnet torquers in orbit, they will not overshoot our target. Um, two is that any wired gauge can achieve our requirements, but some are more favorable than others. For example, some wired gauges might require less layers to be wounded, which we found to be a tedious process. Um, three is that the number of wired turns does not affect magnetic dipole, but decreases power consumption. So therefore, um, number of turns is primarily used to decrease power consumption, but since adding number of turns increases the space inside the space taken by the torque rod inside the air core, we have to also keep that into consideration. Um, a brief procedure on how we went about this process is we first began by maximizing our core shape to increase the magnetic dipole and to decrease the demagnetization time. Once we maximized our core shape, we found we fixed a wire gauge such that um, we, we chose a wire gauge that provides the best flexibility in terms of our operating regions. Um, once we picked a wire gauge, we then followed that by choosing a number of turns and current consumption that meets our required, our minimum required dipole. And then we cross check that with our power and space constraints to ensure that all of our requirements are met. Um, and now Zoe will talk to you about the process of manufacturing our prototypes. For the manufacturing of the magnet torquers, we selected materials that will work best with the results of our optimization to meet the mission requirements. For the torquer rods, we chose a ferrite alloy that is ferromagnetic, which is an object's ability to be magnetized, has high permeability, which means that the material is easy to magnetize, has a high saturation point, which is the point where a material cannot be magnetized any further, low residual flux, which means that there is a low amount of residual dipole after there is no longer a current running through the rods, low coercivity, which means that the material is able to withstand external magnetic fields without losing its magnetic properties, and a high Curie temperature, which is the temperature above which a material loses its magnetic properties. Picture near the center of the poster here is a torque rod wound in combination by our automated coil winder and a team member. For the air core, we chose an aluminum with high tensile strength. In general, we care that the air core is strong because we want the magnet torquers to be able to withstand the stress of being launched into space. For the adhesive, we selected an epoxy with low outgassing characteristics. Outgassing is the release of a gas that's trapped inside of a material when the material is in a vacuum. The lower the outgassing properties, the less there will be gas escaping uncontrollably. We obviously don't want gas from the adhesive to be released unpredictably because that could ruin the optics of a camera that will be on board the satellite. Also, NASA requires a certain level of outgassing standards to be met in order for a satellite to be approved to launch. So we also want to make sure that we meet those standards. For the wire we selected, we kept outgassing characteristics in mind like we did with the adhesive, and we selected a copper wire that has been used by NASA previously. For the manufacturing of the rods and the air core, we designed and developed a coil winder which aims to automate the process of winding the rods and the air core. An automated coil winder will result in a neater, more accurately wound coil, offering a larger degree of control over the magnetic field that the magnet torpers produce. This coil winder design can be shared with other universities who might also be developing magnet torpers for a CubeSat. Pictured at the bottom of the poster here is the setup of our coil winder. And now Cassandra will detail the process of testing. For testing, we would want to verify that the coil that we manufactured does produce the magnetic moment that we optimize it to. 
And the way that we do that is that we will run our, magnet, uh, our magnet worker through a current and it will produce a magnetic field. And for us to make sure that it produces that magnetic field, we'll place a magnetometer a certain distance away from it, which will collect magnetic field readings from it. From there, we would input it into our MATLAB code, which we will then calculate the moment. From there, we want to compare our experimental values to our theoretical, just to verify that our optimization process is accurate and we could rely on it in the future and not depend on testing every single time. For strengths of our testing, as you can see in the picture, we have, do have an octagonal configuration as our setup, and that just helps with efficiency and making sure that we place our coils and magnetometer in accurate positions and it's repeatable every single time. And it also reduces human error since we are the ones placing it and taking the test. For weaknesses, we do have interferences from other objects such as our laptops, our phones, and speakers. We are using a laptop to collect our data, so that will interfere with our data values that we get from it, and hopefully in the future we want to reduce that. And now Trevor will be going over our future works. For our future works, we have several tasks we would like to work on. One being reiteration of our prototype. It's currently made out of 3D printed PLA, which is efficient for testing purposes, but in the future we would like to finalize our magnet worker prototypes with space grade materials and optimal dimensions. Next, our coil winder is currently not fully automated. It still reduces human error in binding tight coils, but it can be improved upon. For controls testing, we need to optimize our tests and algorithms that check the ability for our magnet workers to control the orientation of the satellite. Lastly, the magnetic dipole verification tests will be run with several improvements, such as having less magnetic interference, as mentioned previously. Um, additionally, our experiment setup can be improved upon with more efficient parts, and we are in the process of implementing a Bluetooth module so we can run the experiment from a distance, resulting in less interference. And finally, in the midst of the stay-at-home orders, ADCS teams are still meeting remotely to make as much progress as we can during this spring quarter. Our mission date has been postponed to a later date in accommodation, so we can still maintain our current track of progress. On behalf of the ADCS COILS team, we'd like to thank you for your time and interest in ADCS and WELOC.